G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. Well, actually, I'm in my smithy shop at the moment, and I'm about to make a new drum to make some charcoal. So I thought I'd share the process of how I make the drum and how I make the charcoal. All you need is a bog standard 44 gallon drum or uh, 200 litre, depending where you are. If you can, definitely you need a top, and if you can, get the um, locking ring as well. If you can't get the locking ring, doesn't matter, the top will do. I prefer ones that haven't had oil in them. I think this has had honey in it or something, so it's nice and clean on the inside. So you don't want anything that's flammable in the inside. What I'm going to do now is cut bits all along the bottom at about 50 mil intervals or 200 mil, oh yeah, 50 mil holes, 200 mil intervals around the outside. For that, you could use a grinder or I'm going to use an oxy torch. But if you've got nothing else, use a cold chisel. Now you get another drum, doesn't matter what state it's in, and you want to cut the top and the bottom off. So if it's got a top, hello Bob, that's hot mate. If it's got a top, leave the top off and just cut the bottom out, and we use that as a chimney or an afterburner. So we'll go down the fire pit, and I might throw some in and see what happens. There's my previous one. And as you can see, the bottom's been burned out. But that then is going to make a lovely uh, afterburner. On the bottom, I've just put a lot of shredded paper and then I'll stack the blue gum on top of that. This is the stuff I'm going to be burning a lot of today, which have been down for a long time, but we split it into smaller bits, so hopefully a lot of the moisture won't be there anymore. And this is a pile of new blue gum that we just Anthony, my grandson and I cut yesterday, but it's still pretty wet. You put your hand on it, you can feel the coolness of the moisture. So that's going to sit out here for a little bit. And then we'll take the block splitter and split it up in smaller chunks like we did over there. And just let a lot of that moisture out of it. So let's go and load. Let me go over here and grab some of this stuff. And we'll put it in the drum. I talk in woodworking masterclass to talk about cranky grain. Can't get much crankier than that. As you can see there how I'm filling it, I'm going around the outside of the drum and leaving an empty pocket at the bottom where the paper is so the flames will come up and hopefully ignite the rest of it. But did I wake you, Bob? Did I wake you? Yeah. You don't like chewing this stuff, do you? No, because it's too splintery. Okay, so that's nearly as full as I'll have it. I'm going to set fire to it there, and then when it's taken hold, I'll put more in. But you'll notice I've got this gap down here with all that paper at the bottom, so the fire can come up. Let's put a match to it. Now I'm going to let that burn until it really catches hold, and I'll put some more in. Then I'll put the afterburner on. I'll show you what I do with that. Yeah, you can hear it popping away. I've filled it up all the way now. Now to get rid of that smoke, we'll put the afterburner on. All I use is a couple of metal rods. Give me an air gap. Throw this over the top. Throw that. And that's the drum. It doesn't have a top and a bottom. And shortly, that smoke will disappear. There you have it, good bit of flame and a little bit of smoke coming off, but not very much. 
Okay, it's been burning for a couple of hours now. So what I'm going to do is take off the afterburner and seal it up. For that, I've got gloves on and the lid. Push that off. I'm not going to put the camera in there so you can see, but that pile of timber has really gone down. And then put the top on. You'll notice as soon as I do that, the flames have started to come out of the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is block those holes up with the sand. This can go in here to hold it, so no air can get in there. Get out of the way. And I'm going to block up these holes. So no air can get in. If you found that there was not burnt or flames coming out, leave that vacant or leave it open and the oxygen will draw in through that hole and Eventually, you'll get the orange coals coming there, and then when you do, it's just a question of blocking that vent off. We'll put two on to keep it nice and airtight. So I'm just going to leave that the way it is now until tomorrow morning. No air can get in, so it's going to be drawing everything out of that timber, and when it's finished, there'll be no oxygen left and I'll just have pure carbon, which is charcoal. So tomorrow morning, we'll kick the top off and we'll see how well we did. It's hard work, but well worth it in the end. You'll notice too, the color of the tin changes. If there's any paint on it, the heat's gonna just tear that off. You feel you right there, Bob? Don't you go near it, it's hot. Bob's just going for a walk around the yard to see what I've missed. There you go. Okay, it's the next day and it rained overnight so I don't know if it inhibited the burn. But we'll see what the charcoal looks like and what we've got inside. And we've got a good start. Oh no, there's some stuff there. There we go. When you get down to this, this is what you really want. This stuff here that hasn't gone all the way through, what I'll do, I'll use this for the next burn and uh, it'll help get the fire started because there's a lot of charcoal in there. See, it hasn't gone all the way through. But that's the latest stuff I'd put on. The stuff down the bottom here, that is really nice. It's just what you want. So what we'll do, we'll grab some of this, take it up, and we'll put it on the forge and see how it goes. 